go uphill and bleed a little. We're fine. <laughs> This right here is the Mercedes Unimog, the most badass and the most capable four-wheel drive off-road vehicle. What else do you need, really, I mean, in the world of off-roading? Well, that depends. If you're out here in the snow and the muck, that is really good, but this is better. This is a tracked vehicle, and this is something that will be able to destroy anything in this environment, I guarantee it. W what is this? It's not a Unimog. Okay, well, we need Jay Couch to explain this to us. Jay, where are you at? All right, he practically doesn't need an introduction because Jay has sort of become part of the TFL crew <laughs> with his amazing vehicles. And I want to introduce something that's even more amazing. Why? Because this is a, basically an Arctic rescue vehicle. It's one way of putting it, right? That's, that's one way of putting it for sure. But on another note, it's also good in the dunes. It's good in the swamps. It's, it swims, it crawls, it does it all. What is it? This is called a Haglunds. Haglunds. So it's a Haglunds BV-206. So it's a Swedish machine, close to our German mates over there. Uh, so it actually has a Mercedes. It's the 3.5, 156 horse, turbo, not intercooled diesel. It's a pre-chamber diesel. And it has a, basically a Galinda wagon, our old G-Series uh, automatic transmission in it. So it's kind of perfect in our wheelhouse. It falls in line with, with like the, a lot of the G-Wagons that we build. So a lot of the components that you work with essentially fit right in here. That is right. And the Swedes have done us such a kind favor. They did not follow the Germans on this lead. It is so simple, the way it's designed. It's uh, because when you're in the Arctic or somewhere that's gonna be extraordinarily inhospitable, which is the only reason you would take this, because you're not gonna go down the highway too fast in it. Right. Um, you gotta be able to fix it out in the middle of nowhere. And I'm not saying you're gonna be finding parts, but it's so easy and so simple on that, that you just, it's perfect. Driving instructions are extremely easy. Okay. <clears throat> Basically the start, which I'll just go through, it's a key start, uh -huh. has to be a neutral. This one's a little bit grumpy. There's a little neutral switch that, somewhere I probably could replace that wire, but I don't know if I get that part any longer. But it is basically, that's your steering. And it's the weirdest thing ever, because when we go around a corner, it feels like your ass is getting pushed out from under us. Uh -huh. That's just how it is. So I have a low range and a high range, which is hiding down here. It's super crude. Basically, we're in high range now. Now I'm in low range. Huh. You have to be in neutral and stopped, and now I'm in high range. So you have to be in neutral to go between high and low. Yeah, okay, gotcha. It's, it's not, it's just like almost anything. Um, and if you got to honk at some prairie dogs, you got that guy, <laughs> yeah. you got, you know. So anyway, we'll just go ahead and put her into drive and we'll start moving. Oh yeah, that's uncanny. <laughs> it's really wild. What's the range on this? Oh man, I would be lying if I could tell you, but it's six fuel, so I'm gonna say you've got at least a full day, eight hour day of being able to uh, run this thing. So you kind of base it on RPM and hours as opposed yep, to distance. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so we are out at uh, Jay, the Couch Off Road Proving Grounds here in Colorado, and we're gonna run this first obstacle in both machines. So Huglands and Unimog. So I really want to see it in action. So let's do this. Turning is a very interesting sensation. Oh, man. Right? Like, it's almost like you're drifting. It's like a, yeah. It's, Absolutely, you're getting pushed a long ways, but it feels like. Let's see if we can line up for this one. I'm going to throw her again low, just because it likes that for off-roading. So neutral, then low. Yep. And there we go.
like a sledgehammer. It's <laughs> such a mix. It's love it. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody needs to see this vehicle in terms of the profile because there's something that some of you guys may not understand and that is it's not really one unit, it's two. Yes, they're married. Uh, they're joined at the hips, literally. So what makes the Haglin uh, so unique is you can see this thing's long. It's really, really long. So 22 feet long is absurd. So how are you gonna turn this thing in the woods without taking out everything? Well, you join it at the hips, you're able to twist and articulate and do that. So that allows me to, it is only six feet wide, which is ridiculously narrowed, but now I can go through the trees and the rear carriage follows the front carriage wherever it goes. So I don't have to worry about taking out trees or any of that fun stuff, because it's not fun. And on top of that, it allows these two things to articulate and twist and do their own thing. It's kind of like a Gamma Goat. Some of you guys out there might remember the Vietnam era uh, Gamma Goat that had six wheels. Well, this is just a little better uh, because it's tracked and it floats in water. And this is, he just mentioned also about the Arctic exploring stuff. Absolutely, it's like a snow cat, but what makes it very unique for that type of uh, fitment is it floats. So if you break through the ice, it literally will swim through the water. Um, so you could use it literally globally. In fact, we actually have these here in Colorado. Um, the share emergency uh, service departments use them and whatnot. They're just that good of a machine and they're that easy to keep up and rolling that uh, everybody around the world uses them. OJ, thank you for having us at your playground. Yes. I mean, proving ground. <laughs> the proving I mean, ground. All of the above. Uh -huh. it's, it's fun to have some. So I get to do this stuff by my lonesome and nobody gets to watch how silly it gets. Well, so, now we're here. Now we're here, so now it's like, ooh, fun. So we'll follow the same route we just did in the Hagman. So you air it down. I mean, I was talking about airing down because you want that big footprint, right? Absolutely. So we, we air down. The front tires are 23.9, 19.5 for the rear. All right. Does so he need some steering pressure, right? Yep. Yeah, we're heavy on the nose with this guy because the engine. And but we're not carrying anything. We don't have any look exactly. All right. Are you using working gear or not so I, much? Nope, I am just straight. That was actually, we're in third gear now. Good. And a third direct. Oh, I just missed having this truck. I'm so glad you brought it back, dude. <laughs> this is this a great truck. Right? Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and just lock the disc going into it. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Wait, what? Yep, I'm telling you, it's slippery, dude. No, it's... what the hell? Let's just went for it. <laughs> I know, I know. Look at oh, that look grease. At that. Yeah, that uh... is greasy, dude. So a little bit of second gear. A little pop. There she goes. This could get ugly. It's not that ugly. Well, when it slides sideways. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Oh, he killed it. Beginner driver. What about chains, dude? Oh, chains. Chains would help? We would eat this alive when we had chains. I mean, it is so slippery out, you guys. Like, you can't even imagine. Dude, that didn't look anywhere as difficult as in the Hawklands. If we put the chains on, it gives us the control factor back. Yeah, but, but now you just have to use speed. You said use a little bit. Look at how soft that is. Oh, oh that's great, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Gotta clean off the tires now. Woo, get it, boy. <laughs> Now let's let's quickly talk about what's here um, because some people might be wondering what these tubes connect to. Sure. And, so uh, yeah, please just take us through it. So basically, what you got here, this is the connecting arm on it. These are my steering cylinders, hydraulic steering cylinders that are going to twist both uh, vehicles left or both portions left to right to steer. But it also articulates up and down, 
And then hiding in this guy is a PTO shaft that runs through that drives the, it's from the front cab to the rear cab and actually drives that whole assembly. That's a power takeoff. So essentially it's turning and it just runs that shaft right in back here. Yeah. So drive comes from the engine here. It drives the front cog sprocket there. There's a drive shaft that, so this thing drives the whole belt so you don't need anything in the rear. Through here is a drive shaft that now comes through this with the universal joint to a second universal joint to another drive gear box, which is right on this guy here, which then propels this track. These tracks have steel inside them, but they're all rubberized over the outside. You can put something called ice cleats if you're on really bad Arctic stuff to keep from sliding off the mountain. But right now we're running everything so we can go down the road. A cool thing too that I didn't say at all to you yet, whole thing's fiberglass. Ah. That's why you never find a rusty Haglund. <laughs> They're all fiberglass. So. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, it's got a steel frame inside it. It carries up to 17 passengers. Are you ready for the? Uh, yeah. For this, the is, this is the, uh, this is the. This is the. If you like basic, this is. Uh, we got you covered. We call it the Swedish Spa. Ah, there you go. Ooh, okay. yeah, it, it a little like sauna, sauna wood. <laughs> inside here, there's actually a bilge pump in there for when we were doing deep water fording or actually floating swimming, because it is going to leak and that'll pump it out the side. These flip up their storage. There's a heater set up, and then we put another one of our little mobile heaters that we use in our uh, dirt box. Is that stuff one of there. the diesel ones? Yeah. Yeah. Turn hard, turn early is usually the deal. Yeah. Like a boat. Yeah, exactly. Just like a boat. It's the most unusual sensation driving this thing. <laughs> but it's awesome. <laughs> it's funny because over the snow, it just goes like a magic carpet. Now we're gonna go this way. Let's try to go up that. Hard, hard. There you go. All right. And goose it straight up that if you can. Go straight up this? Yeah. Let's keep going straight. Yep, yep. Punch it. I like it. Punch it. Punch it. Punch it. Oh, baby, no. There she goes. Ha <laughs> ha. Now hard. Keep Bro. going. Keep going that way. We're gonna go in the hole, but we're gonna cut straight up. Yep. Keep going straight. And now start turning hard left. Yep, you got it. And we're gonna go right over towards Andre. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about it, we're good. We're 22 feet long. <laughs> it's weird to think that way because you got a whole other vehicle right behind you. You got a whole other car. So keep on straight through here. You can just stay in it, man. It's a half throttle at least the whole way. Keep going through here. Yep, straight through. All right. Now, I will admit that this area is a little bit narrow for me. <laughs> Because Jay is a lot smaller than me. Yeah. Try the suicide now. Yeah, I've been playing with it. I just feel like Roman when I play with it. <laughs> that didn't sound right. But you know what I mean. <laughs> that didn't sound right. <laughs> Twin plastic fuel tanks, one there, one there. This fan is actually evacuating the air out through the whole, call it transmission tunnel, if you will. It pulls it up through there. In the wintertime, we leave it off to keep a little heat in there. But in the summertime, when I'm running this thing, we keep it on. It does up to 35 miles an hour, 34 miles an hour is what it's rated for. I'm not hitting fourth gear, so I'm gonna be doing about 25 tops right now. Um, but it actually has a working suspension. This is kind of cool. So on our idler wheels here, oh, look at that. there's actually a little, it's a torsion suspension on each one of those links. So you do have a little bit of suspension action going on this, and that's why it can handle that 34 mile an hour speed. Now, when we get on the ride here and we start hitting some stuff, as you break over and hit something, you're not going to want to be doing that fast, but it's cool. Yeah, it's, it's really <laughs> cool. Well, there's a lot of World War II tanks that have this type of suspension set up, European ones. Um, and it's interesting for a lot of people to see this in action because you don't quite realize how much articulation each one of these little wheels goes through when you're going over terrain. So it's something worth seeing. Even when those things don't work, you know they're not working. It hurts. <laughs> it's like literally painful. But you want to see inside? Yes, absolutely. Super, this is as simple as it gets. You'll appreciate. Um, oh, that's the Roman steering wheel. We love that. <laughs> yeah. At his age it's and his osteo, it's easy for yeah, him to get. Yeah. yeah, okay, great. So there's your steer, there's your uh, suicide knob. This is the entire heater assembly. That little box up there. Ask me how well it heats your feet. Yeah, so, so it doesn't have a duck, but not much. <laughs> it's an automatic, or we call it a slush box because it's so muddy how it feels. The windshield, if you notice, has a slight kick forward, and that is for 
snow pile up and whatnot. When you park this thing, nothing worse than going out at 20 below, zero, 30 below and trying to clear the snow off. This actually keeps so your snow doesn't Oh, that makes it. a lot of sense. Yeah, and you got the, the wipers at the top so it's brushing it down so it doesn't pile up at the bottom there. All right, dude, first of all, thank you for your trust, for giving us a lot of trust with your machinery. So this fully built Unimog, because you refurbish them, you import them, right? Import, refurbish, and actually create it to a slightly new animal that we call a Norad. Well, you, yeah, and you increase the power, uh, highway gears, or at least capability of highway. All that, there's a lot going on. <laughs> so already, dude, this machine, I mean, your Norad build, is really valuable. This is like 400k? 400 grand, yep. And yeah. this isn't getting any cheaper. I thought I thought we could get it honed in a little quicker and lower, but nope. <laughs> it's just what it is, man. And uh, how much is the hub run? Man? That hub run's real like the, the hub run is probably 120, maybe 130. So 120, okay. Depending on the time of the year. Okay. The blizzard, the value just went way up. <laughs> Which we've had. Which is still over here. So dude, so right now I feel really confident in the mom. You know, it's, it's the, the tires are deflated. She's, good. She's doing really good. So I make a full turn, yeah, right? Hard, hard left around. It's gonna get greasy fast. We're just slippery. That snow kind of melted like it is. It's just slush, and we compress it with 14 and a half thousand miles of Unimog. Yeah. Ice. Ice, ice, baby. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. So, so far, so oh, good. I don't know if we'll make this first one, but I would sure like to Which see way? Try. Which way? We're going to go oh, right straight here. down this, and then straight up that. And once you get in it, you got to pin it and win it. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going for a ride. We're not going to get up it. There you go. Hit it, man. Hit it, hit it. <laughs> not enough, huh? Now first gear and reverse. <laughs> That's gnarly, dude. That's gnarly. Oh! <laughs> now get a little back. Can you back up? Yeah. Get as much up there as you can. Cool, right, right here. Now let's do third gear, which is first, is what we're seeing. Yes. Yep, and just Forward. launch that bad boy. Yep. Launch it. Let's do this. Yeah! <laughs> now you gotta follow his line. Oh, oh yeah. boy. Once this gets that edge, it's gonna free fall, so just make sure we're straight. Free fall? Pretty much. <laughs> so uh, let me... I would say get her in second gear. Cross country too, yep. Country two. Straight into it and just stay straight. Let off the brakes, let it go. Got only a little oh, 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 oh. Okay, now we got another one. Pull up right here. Yes. We're gonna have to get to third gear and nail it. Here? Yep. Get up this hump. There you go. Hit it hard. Four, four, four. You got it. <laughs> I'm getting get ahead started. of this. I'm getting ahead of this. This is beautiful. Look at that door stop. Super old school, low tech. Yeah, but it, it works. One step higher. There's my release handle. <laughs> All right. That's factory, everybody. <laughs> it's just cool. And you'd be surprised when you're fumbling around with gloves and stuff. Here it is. It's it's your ripcord. Yeah, it, well, and also Porsche does that, by the way. Okay. On their super super light sports cars. Oh, that's cool. People I, don't realize that. I'll show you the uh, the back seat's actually pretty trick. So you've got, in fact, I'll climb in. Oh, you've got the world's second most horribly uncomfortable seats here, and your buddy's there, so don't kick yourself where it counts. And I pull my ripcord again, and now I've got my overhead. I could stand up on my little grippy stuff here and say hi to everybody up there. Throw diarrhea balloons at somebody or whatever you want. 50 caliber machine gun <laughs> for da, da, some da, da, people da. or equipment for looking at icebergs breaking. That's right. And you know what's kind of cool also is uh, on the roof, there's basically tread paint everywhere. So you can climb all over this thing and not fall on your duff. But it's just. The engine is hiding under there. You just snap off the covers. So if you have a mechanical issue with the motor and whatnot, mm -hmm. you could work on it inside. 
Really? You're not out there under the hood killing yourself. You can do it actually in there. So you actually can crawl inside, yes. bad weather, yes. you fix whatever hopefully yes. is on the top yes, of it. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's pretty nice. And it's just, you know, you look, this thing weighs 9,000 pounds empty and it Ooh. floats. I mean, the, <laughs> see, we, we have a Hummer that weighs over 9,000 pounds and I'm pretty damn sure it doesn't float. Oh man, right. <laughs> yeah, so I'd like to find out. So what is the output uh, overall of the powertrain roughly? Yep, so powertrain is 156 horsepower, uh -huh. and that should stay pretty relevant even here. We might lose uh, six horsepower to our elevation. Um, what we'll do later on is we'll intercool it and do a few other things. We'd like to get about 200 plus. We may change out that powertrain to something else to get 250. We kind of like to not mess too much with stuff. Yeah, gotcha. But this one, I think more horsepower is gonna be better for sure in that snow. So what have we learned today? <laughs> that it's outstanding to hang out with Jay. It's a good day. <laughs> this is the best day in the office ever, especially because we get to drive these and there's no roaming around. Exactly. Yeah. Woo! Whoop, whoop. <laughs> but I also learned that tracks are amazing, especially for flotation in the snow and everything else. Uh, but what's the top speed of this bad boy? 34. Miles okay, per hour. that's not gonna make it very far to Moab. Mm, a long, long, <laughs> we'll make it, but it'll take a week. It should take a while. <laughs> so if you want to go to Moab, take the Unimog uh -huh. on the highway, bring a trailer, bring bring your Hoglands behind you. We are building a custom wagon trailer for this behind that. See, that's to be continued. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys. Uh, once again, check out oldtfl.com for everything automotive and really, really cool I'm going to say tank reviews. <laughs> Tankish reviews. Tank yeah, there you go. <laughs>